So let's begin by uh, thank you again for indulging me with this. That's my I, privilege. I know, that, I know that it's not fun, but we'll... Oh, it is. It is always. Okay, great. Okay. Just again, you're, you're, you're the, the whole picture of 12 centuries or a thousand centuries, um, the unbroken chain, the chain, mm -hmm. um, the the heart of the clan, the heart of the tradition, mm -hmm. in three sentences. Okay, are we ready? Yeah, yeah, oh yes. Well, first, the most important is to understand we're talking about the shell here. The vehicle I've borrowed. Very useful and very handy. But I'm not only the heir or the ultimate offspring of an ancient prophecy from Hyperborea. I'm something else. I just borrowed that. So let's talk about what's been borrowed by the vehicle. 12,000 years ago, Hyperborea, also known as Greenland, Kalashit Nunat, the country of the Kalat in Eskimo, which is not the same as the Eskimo. Oh, was Did start again? Yeah. The same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, about my origins. That's right. So I have to start all over again. Yeah. Which means we are talking about the origins of the vehicle I've borrowed. This flesh, this shell that goes way back to a disaster that stays in our unconscious memory. Everybody remembers of Atlantis. Very few are members of Hyperborea. Mm -hmm. They can look up in a dictionary then. Mm -hmm. It's the North Pole, also known as Greenland. For the people living in Greenland, they call it Kalashlit Nunat, the country of the Kalat, Kelt, the pure. When the North Ridge sank, hence Atlantis, all the Gulf Stream that was going to Greenland to keep it green went into Europe. That was the end of the European Ice Age. That was the beginning of our ice age, and then we had to split. Some of us from northern Hyperborea went in Siberia and became all the women, priestesses, warriors that stays in our memory as the Amazons, the Sarmatians, the Scythians. Some of us from the west part of Hyperborea went west, and they created all the ancient civilization pre-Columbian in America like Tiawanako, for instance, and actually our language is very close to Nahuatl, Quetzalcoatl. Atl, in my language, means the breath, the breath of the divine. And the one who were on the east, actually the Tunit, which in my language, Celtic language, Tunit means the, the Venetic people, the people from Gwennet, went east and they followed the ice for about 2,000 years. The first land free of ice they could find was southern Brittany, Karnak. And that's where my family has been settling for about 8,000 years. Karnak exists also in Egypt. Al Karnak is the death valley of the pharaoh. And uh, naturally it exists also in Greenland. American air base of Thule for the Eskimo is Karnak, which means the navel, the center of the earth, the most sacred place of the earth. So we just replicated that system. And my family has been the keepers of this lore, of this megalithic civilization that's 8,000 years old, 9,000 years old, 8,700 for the dolmen of Kier Mario at Karnak, which means 3,000 years older than Stone Age, for instance. Mm -hmm. And then the lore, the powers of this ancient Hyperborean civilization passed from mother to daughter and so forth uninterruptedly for thousands of years. And here I am, the only so called male, actually more both male and female androgynous as the fulfillment of this prophecy that at the end when a big shift, the major shift would have to come there'll be someone to help, some form of a midwife in a new rebirth. Here is the roots of my origin. Mm -hmm. It's very ancient, it dates way back before the Druids, nothing to do with the so-called Druids of history. First, Druids never called themselves Druids, that was the way by which people addressed them, Druid means very wise, like Rinpoche in Tibetan, very close, or as wise as a tree, Dru is the tree, the tree, the oak tree, the same root in English, tree, in Dru. They, we call ourselves at the time Kelde, which means the servants of God. Let's go back 
We're just going to back up a few sentences to the trades. The Let's druids. start with the trades. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the druids. First, they would call themselves druids. That was the way by which the people were calling them as a sign of respect. That means honorable, wise person, as wise as an oak tree. Tree, dru, wid, wisdom. The same root in English and in this ancient language. The actual druids, they call themselves druids naturally, they call themselves Keldanes. Kele de, the servants of the divine, the servants of God. Also, Kele, the same root as Hil, K and H are common, are the healers of God. Not the one who heal from God, mm -hmm. the one who heal God, mm -hmm. protects God. Mm -hmm. Kele is a system of love and of shielding in the same time as well as of healing. Here is for my roots. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the, you, you, you mentioned in your writings, and that's what I'm drawing from, the um, shamanic um, training and I'm going to say meditative training just a little bit if there's any kind of hint you can give me about some of the training that you went through as a young man well this is not shamanistic in origin or there is a major difference whereas the shamans in their totemic aspect always embody some form of an animal the ancient Kildian the so-called druids were having a transference upon trees mm. trees mm -hmm. that was the actual totem that's why I'm forbidden to eat vegetables, for instance. I'm not supposed to eat anything that helps us breathe, like a leaf. Trees mm -hmm. and fruits, yes, fruits are the gift of the tree, but not the plants. I have no problem with people eating plants, even leaves, as long as they treat them with equal respect as an Eskimo killing a whale or an American Indian killing a buffalo. Mm -hmm. And then everything is fine. My initiation was more than initiation, it was acroamatic, it is a term that exists in English, means directly from the world of one to the ear of another, mm. pure oral tradition, <coughs> and it was mostly ethical, first to break down any possible trace of ego mm. on me, I'm just a servant, I practice unconditional healing, unconditional love and unconditional justice. It is also a hardening initiation, you have to be extremely hard and not being confused also, you have the powers of playing God, but you don't want to interfere with the divine will, which is very hard. So everything is ethical, ethical about justice, about being fair, about not being pervaded by glory, money, power. You say in American, power is correct, absolute power, absolutely correct. I got absolute powers 15 years ago in Europe at 12 million worshippers. I was making a lot amount of money. I've never been corrupted. I was living extremely simply. All the money was sent to Africa, save the dying children, to the American Indians, to Israel, where I saved the Royal Eagle of Israel, the Osnia. When I took care of them, they were only two living specimens, and today they are by the thousands above the Negev and the Golan. All that was part of my initiation this breaking down of any drift of ego, of power, and always to serve with equal justice and humility. But it has been a training uninterrupted from the age of, before I was born, to 18 years old, twice nine, and that's only at 27 that I was actually a full-fledged heir of my family. But remember, that's the shell speaking, not what decided to take over the shell for other purposes. Mm -hmm which come from another dimension and very needed right now. Yeah. Okay, well I hope I answer some of your question, which yeah. is very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is great. Um, Anything? Let's talk a little bit about um, your unique, unique skill. We all have unique skills. Mine are more salient than others. I'm not above I others. No, I'm I not higher others. No, I just I have skills that yeah, unfortunately I have become very, very rare <laughs> at that time period on this planet. Well, 
why, you know, again, there's this, nothing happens by chance, you know, this is, of this course is, not. you're here for a time, this is the right, this is the time, the moment is now, what you bring, what you offer, mm. humanity, yes, is, is it's very strategic, yes, not only to humanity, to all life, yes, humanity is a part of it, yes, um, what is it that you're bringing, what is that unique quality that you are bringing that all life needs now? A way out. That's what we badly all need, a way out. That means the earth has actually started to die. It's not that the earth will possibly die. The earth has actually started to die. And for some reason, there is a small window of hope, reasons to technical and actually too secretive for me to even allude to. There is no time anymore for messages. Messages came and came and came. The children of God came all the time to say basically the same thing, be good instead of being bad. We are all one here, give instead of taking. Okay, love is universal. There is no separation between all things. It's no time for messages. What it's time for right now is proofs. What I call empiricism, not empiricism, but from the proof, the example, people need model at that point mm. to understand that they also can be associated to this great shift, mm. not being excluded. Mm. So that's why one of my ideas was always to create a provocation. Because I'm a scientist, it's easy for me to have the doors open of universities and laboratories and make experiments completely impossible to make. Cells burned by a laser in the nucleus, we take half of those cells working in triple blind system, all the cells I'm taking care of don't die, all the cells I'm not taking care of, of course, die. We can go even further, that can be done from a distance, on simultaneously on several samples of cells, and then we can go even further in absolutely heterodox experiment, up to the point where people would be ready to see me as a new prophet, a new messiah, and then hold your horses. The idea is you all are messiah and prophet then, mm. and you're all associated to what I have to do, and I'm not once again above anybody here on this planet. It's for me to teach anyone. We take kids, South Central America, in the Bronx, pushing drugs, the dregs of your own society, the hopeless. Let me spend half an hour with six of them, and I will guarantee that half an hour later they'll make exactly the same experiment with the same rate of success I have done myself, which means that I've just unfrozen your own powers that exist within every one. I just happen to have been unfrozen in time, awakened in time, and nothing else. If you put an appliance that keeps someone from hearing when he's a baby, mm. after a few months, the brain not having happened to hear, you're deaf. The same, you're blind, you're agazic, anosmic, you cannot taste, you cannot smell. I have learned a few things, you haven't, but this is, is possible to reawaken, to unfreeze yes. this power. I just happen to have more than your five senses. Mm -hmm. Hence, the difficulty for me to explain what it is. It's like trying to explain someone being born blind with the painting of Michelangelo or Botticelli. And once again, the only semantic tool, the only link I can have with you for you to understand is the experiment experiment and experiment again. Yes. The proof. Yes. People are tired of anything else right now and we are running out of time. We need proofs, we need tools, and that's why I'm here to bring tools, to re-empower people. That's what they need the most. Not freedom, not a new message, not a new enlightenment, just tools. Very down to earth, literally, and matter of the fact. You talked about the, the, need, the need for a model. And, you know, to, like, this is so clear. This is this is that's how that's how every capacity is opened. You can't open a capacity without a model. No. People are tired of all theories. They need to see with their own eyes, to experience with their own senses, that it's easier to be happy than they could think, mm. to be whole, mm. and it's better to be whole than being sick. It's better to be unhappy than being unhappy. It's also better to be wealthy than being poor. But we, there is so much we can share together. We can grow so much, so many resources within our own capacity. There is such a waste of talent. Mm. And that's exactly the worst thing. What have you done with your talents? Mm. That's what 
drive me nuts the most. The beauty, the power, the potential within people will not even use that 5% in a life. And this is what people can see. People who have been processed by me just glow. They just glow, not in an exceptional way. They have become normal. We just have lost the sense of what is being normal, the sense of normalcy. Normalcy is not just the rat race after who dies the richest win. Was there a life before their death? No. We should be alive all the time at every minute of our life and being happy and being useful and abide to our duty that should make us even more happy. Being of service. We are the servants. Humans are not only animals, they are animals with free will. They are animals with a special gift, the gift of choosing, which gives us a lot of duties, the gift to protect, to serve, and to love. And that's where we can be completely fulfilled. There is no other way we can be fulfilled, but in doing our own duty, which is divine in a sense. This goes back to the first co-divine delegation. We are all divine. The divine is without and also within. And that's in that cooperation, this cooperative work of co-creation with the divine that we can be completely fulfilled. Right now we are not in the process of co-creating, we are in the process of trying to atone for what we have done, trying to bail out from an imminent destruction and get ready for the shift that's going to happen no matter what. Let's hope it will become, it would happen painlessly and without too much convulsion rather than happen in a cataclysmic way, which is actually long overdue. Yeah. But the more people will be associated to this atonement, the more we can convince the higher forces that have already planned the cleansing, the catharsis of this planet, okay, hold your horses, there is maybe a way. They start to understand something. When, 12 years ago, when I was to Greenland, I wanted to reintroduce the mammoth, the mammoth in Greenland, very handy, by the way, to bring goods from the east to the, to the west, with the inland seas, through the ice. It was also a way, it would have cost just a couple of million bucks, just about cloning cells that already exist into an elephant. It would have been a way to show, let's say God, hey look, look at what those little monkeys have done. They have destroyed the mammoth themselves, you know. And now they are smart enough to introduce it. Okay. So they start to get the point. They start to understand that not only they need to preserve what can still be preserved, but they can even be acting in a proactive way and atone concretely for what they have done, reintroduce the mammoth. We can reintroduce a lot of species, the wolf of Tasmania, mm -hmm. anything. But my project, my real project is called IMAGO, I-M-A-G-O, which in terms of psychoanalysis means a state of perfect completion, in terms of entomology, insect is the perfect insect after a larval life. Sometimes the IMAGO state lasts only one day, but what a day. We all are lovers compared to our own potential. Mm -hmm. And there is an evolutionary leap that's long overdue, actually, that has been blocked mm -hmm. by those forces of chaos, those forces of destruction, for millions of years. Remember, I'm a paleontologist and I know exactly what I'm talking about. Just thinking that your immediate ancestors, Cro Magnon, had a brain of 2.2 liters, where today it's 1.4, mm -hmm. and with much better convolution. You know, and a much better wiring, not unlike a whale or an, uh, a killer whale or a dolphin, and it's only 40,000 years ago. Just try to imagine humanity of a, a couple of million years ago, which has nothing to do with the ape. Nothing, nothing, nothing. There is a leap that's long overdue, and that's my project, to turn everyone from its larval state into an imago, complete being. What it takes at that point is for me, because I have the machinery for change, the schematics is just to build a few machines, very special pyramids with nine angles, two thirds on the outside, one third on the inside, and then a sphere in a very strange alloy, whose schematics once again is here, that doesn't really exist on this planet, with a special bioliquid inside. And then through thermal imagery, I would be connected to those people and submit that to my own processing with my strange powers. What I can guarantee is that people entering the sphere 
and people going out of the sphere less than an hour later wouldn't be the same species. They will be real humans. Complete. It's not to replace human, it's make them really human, which they are not yet. They have stopped that path toward a real humanity. We are not even using our brain at more than 10%. If only we could use it at 100, it wouldn't be so bad, but we can do much better than that. And go back to true humanity, that's exactly mighty, in which there is no separation between all beings, between there is no separation between the mind, the soul, the body, one another, parents with children, children with family, family with a village, the village with the country, the country with the world, and the world with the universe, mm -hmm. and with God. All one, oneness, unity, that's the whole point, that's what we have all forgotten. I know that at one point, you want to ask me also about a non-local <laughs> event, and all that. that has everything to do with that precisely. That means when I'm taking care of someone, you know, from one inch or one thousand miles, just the same. There is no separativeness, there is no separation between things. If only you could have one sense more than you have, as I do. The way you see the universe, the way I'm seeing you or this camera is so different. There is no difference between the atoms of the wall, a new atom, everything is a flux, everything is a movement of energy all the time. Mm -hmm. There is no life and death then, there is a perpetual continuation mm -hmm. and naturally there is no distance, the greatest secret of the universe. There is no time. All experiments in physics prove there is no time. Each time we put time to the test, it doesn't exist and yet tell me of one human that can write a book on a simple chapter on an a temporal story. How can it be possible to even conceive? And since there is no time, there is no space. Space, time, it's one single continuum. Actually, there is no reality. That's why it's so easy for me yeah. to surf, yeah. to switch between this multiple dimensional multi-reality universe and make things impossible happen. They were impossible in one little reductionistic yeah. reality. But in another one, they were so simple to organize. You could do it, anyone can do it. I just happen to be the one right now with a key. Well, and, you know, again, you, you have the, the lineage and the heritage and, you know, anyway. I have the memory. You have the same heritage and the same lineage, everybody. Yeah. yeah. You just have been cut off. Yeah. You have been lobotomized. Yeah from your own senses, from your knowledge, from your sensitivity, from your heart, you have been cut off from one another, but that can be reestablished. I have the key, I can pass it to you, you can pass it to someone else. And that's something new also in my project for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to delegate. Mm -hmm. Why? Because time is running out. Yeah. Okay, we can just sit down and meditate and wait that the greatest consciousness raises and we don't have that opportunity and that chance today. We need to go fast, to be very effective, to give proofs to people, give them example, and then to associate them, re empowered. Yes. That's it. That, uh, you know, this, this idea of the uh, capacity to delegate, you call delegate, to be yes. able to pass on, to awaken and have others do similar things mm -hmm. in their own way. Um, how, let's, let's just open that up a little bit, because that is, a, it's always been, you know, I want to talk, right? I want to, I want to share. There's so many things that come up as you speak. First, um, my friend Christian Murdy. Mm -hmm. Have you read much of him? Do you know much about him? I know everything about him. Great. Um, he, he, one of his greatest works was a conversation with the physicist David Bohm. The name of it, the collected works, was The Ending of Time. Yes. Which was exactly what you're talking about. They were yes. very specific about that. What I'm saying is not mine. Everybody knows it. Well, It's yeah. ancient knowledge. It's common yeah. knowledge. Yeah. 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 But it's like the truth, you know, people claim are running for the truth, but when they face the truth, most of the time they go back, way back, okay, it's too much for what I, I don't want to change ultimately. Yeah. Let's talk briefly about how you could implement the spreading of this awakening and having other people learn and so on. Is, can you go into that at all? Oh yes, it's very simple. It's a simple catalytic effect. I need to have groups of people whom I can teach, who can teach other and so forth. It can go very fast. In a year, Eight billion people can be healers. Mm. And then, oh, I'm going to have a lot of enemies. A lot of people are going to be looking for jobs, <laughs> including governments. That's the problem. Yeah. When people are happy and when people are free, 
They don't need doctors. They don't need priests. They don't need judges because there is no crime. They don't need governments. Worse, nightmare. <laughs> or this dream. And it takes just starting the whole process, to priming the pump, having a team of a few dozen people whom I've taught directly, who are going to taught others, and so forth. Yeah. One person can teach 10, yeah. 10 person can teach 1,000, yes. and it goes exponentially and very, very fast. Once again, from proofs. That's why also we need to have our own laboratories because when the scientific corpus is going to understand the danger, the threat to their own paradigm that's going to be washed away, we better have our own laboratories to establish our own, pr our own proofs. Mm. Okay. That's what people need once again. Proofs, proofs, proofs. Expericism. Not new messages. Um, let's talk about health. Let's, you know, people... To, to most people, not being... I mean, not being sick not being sick is healthy. Is healthy right? it's, it's so crazy. But so health, let's, let's redefine like now. Not being... Unhappy is being happy. No. There is a major difference between not being sick and being healthy. Being healthy is being happy. Being in love with oneself, with God, with the entire universe, with one another. It's just being on duty, being healthy and being happy. It's not solely being whole. It's a proactive process by which you help others be whole. And assuming that the whole world would be whole, there is always a way to make it wholer, more uni united, for instance, and happier. Always. This is the pursuit of happiness in terms of evolution, in terms of spirituality. Always. That's how you are healthy. You are healthy when you are happy. You are happy when you are on duty. When you are one with the divine and with yourself. To me, that's the definition of health. It's a proactive and what I've called at one point healthening, which means a dynamic of health. Not just being perfectly sound, powerful, young also. I mean, what are those free radicals? Who said we're supposed even to die? We die because we are too many and we have lost the key. But that's not necessary at all. It's a way by which nature is getting rid of too many. If we could go back peacefully to a smaller amount of people in terms of a new evolution, there'll be no need for aging, no need for sickness. We'll be all one with one another and with the divine and with life. No aging process, no separation, and yet we'll be all different. Mm. That's oneness within differences. Yes. That's the beauty of life. Yes. That's the beauty of the divine. There is one God in an infinite levels of aspects and realities. But basically, every prophet has said the same. That's just the one who followed them <laughs> who decided that was otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Um, mm. It's interesting when we think of when we use the word God, the, the languaging. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a taboo, absolute taboo that I'm infringing all the time. To a Druid or to a Jew, and <laughs> there is a lot of things in common between my people and their people, of course. The concept that trying to give a name to the divine or even conceptualize the divine is a blasphemy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To me, to make it to make it, not her, not him, not them. As one being anthropomorphic beside is horrible, is pathetic, is what I call hypotheism. I propose hypertheism in which you have so much respect for the divine that ultimately you don't even pray to the divine. Why don't you pray to yourself? Why do you put the blame on God on everything? Why do you look for a solution within God? That's what I've said. And that was not after one of your presidents. It's from my own ancestor. Instead of asking what God can do for you, why don't you ask yourself what you can do for God? Pray to yourself to help the divine who is right now suffering through life, through its expression on this planet at least. A lot. So the divine is everywhere doesn't deserve a name, deserves respect, yeah. Yeah. and love, yeah. and protecting. Okay, sorry, I'm getting, no. I'm getting moved. 
You're doing great. This is no, exactly I'm just getting moved. This, this is exactly right, don't you think? It's perfect. Yes. Hmm. Perfect. Um, let's talk now, um, again, another topic, chapter. Um, Anything. The people are so frightened. They live their lives in, in, in perpetu- fear. In perpetual fear. Yes. The state of what I'm going to call my language coherent meaning and purpose, mm-hmm. this, this divine quality that you were talking about. Conflict comes in, fear comes in, shatters that coherent energy, mm-hmm. and the dis ease of that breaks the whole sh- fractures the whole thing. So let's talk a little bit about yes. the origin of disease. You've talked about what is health. Let's talk about what, it, what causes disease. Mm-hmm. And then, if you will, um, how you are able to come in, again, my language, please, you're, you're dropping into a, your word, dimension, mm-hmm. with another image slash reality, mm-hmm. and, and, and replacing, literally, the, the image, mm. reality, that caused the fear and the disease. So let's come back to fear. Very interestingly, in my country, in Brittany, what used to be the country of my ancestors, there were seven healer gods that, of course, are called today seven healer saints. At the top of the food chain of healing is the same disease and the same god or saint that healed the supreme disease from which all other arise, which was fear. fear. But fear, it's too simple, it's too easy, it's an easy shot goes with something else. Everybody, deep, deep inside, has a very legitimate fear that goes with guilt. Some kind of a collective responsibility of what we have done. Mm. Not only to others, not even to the environment, but to ourselves. I wish so much people could become selfish, you know, not egotistic, but enjoy this wonderful gift, this wonderful difference that's within, that's called self. But they are not even selfish. Why should they smoke, use drugs, use alcohol, uh, be detrimental to themselves, use toxic products all the time, being in perpetual conflict between mind, body, between what they really aspire to in their heart and what they do with their life in terms of money making, for instance. No, that's a global fear that relates to a global guilt and that goes way back to an actual fact of complete self-destruction. Disease comes from separation. We are separated from the divine disease. We are separated from one another disease. We are separated from ourselves. Deep inside, we are all shattered. Disease, that's what it is. It's more than a disease, actually. It's a self-destruction. Everything is self. In my language, we also say, we never die. We always kill ourselves. It's like a choice. But for most people, it's not even a choice. They just are compelled to destroy themselves, destroy one another, destroy their own family, and destroy their country, and destroy the world. And this was not the way. Man isn't evil. That's where I would clash with the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. There is no original sin. There was an original blessing. Thank you, Matthew Fox. Okay? Mm-hmm. We have been all blessed with this choice. The only choice we have is to say yes, to surrender. Yes, God, thank you. This is so, I don't even want your free will anymore, you know, I want to comply to your will and what a joy, what greatness, what fulfillment. This is bliss on tap. Everything that separates is illness. Everything that reunifies, justice, use, use, one, unus. The etymology of justice is when we are all one. Mm. That's what it means. Mm. Justice, the one who say use, use is Unity, the same root, is when we are united that everything is fair and just. There cannot be any injustice. Then you cannot harm yourself. I mean, you can, obviously, but you shouldn't. Mm. And there there is a point, there is a stage of evolution where we didn't and where we will not anymore. That's exactly what we are working on right now. The idea of justice to me and in my naive, you know, uneducated um, Mm upbringing, is um, some, some external force punishing, hurting, 
um, you know, you were a bad person, you did it wrong, and I'm going to I'm going to make you pay so that you never do it again. Punitive justice. Yes. I mean, that's the that's the whole concept. It's it? like I'm saying repentance in my process, mm -hmm. or atonement. They don't understand to repent means to rethink, rethink to your own mistakes and don't do them anymore. Sacrifice is not what you take away, it's what you gave away. It's always positive. And justice is not about punishment. Mm. Punishment is what you are doing every day with yourself, with one another. You are punishing without any reason, without any validity yourself. Mm. No, justice is about reward, is about fulfillment, mm. is some kind of a climax of happiness, justice. is where we are all one. Mm. And everything that imbalances this unity is unjust, that's the definition. Everything that contributes to being reunited and happy is just. That's a very simple and legitimate definition of justice. Mm -hmm. Not some external sword, you know, yeah. or whip ready to punish you for your trespassing. Yeah. You are punishing yourself for trespassing all the time. Yeah. Where do you think cancer is coming from? Where do you think AIDS is coming from? We are the oncogenes of this planet. That means the genes of structuration of the planet, the humans, I mean the original humans. And just like in a cancer scenario, those oncogenes who are not supposed to be active after you have grown up, they start to be active again, then they multiply, they become immortal, in one word megalomaniac, sounds familiar, looks like a human being, and then they destroy their own body due to their megalomania. They want to become God and immortal, they die. AIDS, what it is? Lymphocyte, T4, it's like the Praetorian guard of the life empire. The defense officers themselves who kill one another. We are the lymphocyte T4 of this planet. We are the guardians, the enlightened guardians of this planet, whom we have started to kill, to dominate, to destroy. And the earth is dying from AIDS, we are dying from AIDS. Oh, how weird it is. Every disease reproduces what we are inflicting to our own GO self, our greater self, our living self. Nothing less and nothing more. And when you join in, when you atone for life and try to do something positive for others and for life, you are healing yourself in the same time, in the same process. Because you transcend your little self to a greater self and systems of reciprocation immediately take place. And you are better. You feel so much better. You don't have any idea how people 15 years ago in Europe were feeling good about themselves just by knowing they were contributing to saving the children in Africa, saving the environment, the endangered species, saving the American Indian, doing something good. Actually, my healing in the system was just unimportant. The healing was taking place in their own psyche, in their own heart. For the first time in their life, they were feeling good. They could pretend they are good to others, but deep inside they knew they were doing the wrong thing. All of a sudden, for the first time, even though they wouldn't have never thought they could have done something positive, they were doing something great. And they were associated to doing something great. And they were feeling great. And there was no room for death, and no room for cancer, and no room for AIDS or whatever. That's the trick. That's the trick of health. To associate people to their own healing, a global one. Always go to the higher picture of life. Wonderful. Let's talk about your, again, now, I'm, I'm broken. I'm sick, I'm, I'm diseased, um, I hear about you, the wonderful healer that can fix everything, right? I can make healers, I'm not a healer, okay? I can make 10 healers in an hour if you want. God is the healer. More, tell me more. But also what I want to get to is, yes. is your specific technologies. You have, you have, you have skills Mm -hmm. that are quite powerful and unique. Mm -hmm. um, tell, me in, uh, tell me specifically what your technology does to c bring me back to balance so that I don't die or that I, the disease uh, disappears. Well, let's talk about my MCC technology then, the one I'm starting to implement on a wider scale. It's stands for Morphogenic Composite Ideogram Cybernetics. Sounds very barbarian, barbarous, sorry, but it's very simple. It's just taking a person as a whole in terms of her or his own DNA, 
shape the morph, the sound of his own voice, his own movement, shrinking down to some kind of a mathematical equation in an ideogram, and then process the essence of the person, purified, simplified, you know, dehumanized and rehumanized in a different way. And possibly blend them together, which means I could take care through this MCC process of an entire town, you know, just by taking a few samples, a few hundred of samples, blending them all together through some kind of a morphotype, and we can curb crime. We can just completely reduce violent crime, sexual crime, drug crimes, by going to the cause of it, going to the cause. We can extend that to nation. This has application in terms of counter-terrorism. We can just implant within those bad guys a compulsive desire to redeem themselves and do something else, which is peaceful, is better than black ops and just, you know, killing them. And this is in perfect abidance with free will. We just help people do what they want to do, but they don't know it most of the time. They don't want to destroy themselves, they don't want to die, they don't want to be in a wheelchair, they don't want to have a lung cancer because they smoke. They want to be happy, they want to be healthy, they want to be all united and all different in the same time. That's exactly what this technology that unified people, that symbolizes them, that shrinks them down to a point to a unique symbol can do. And then it comes handy, my powers, to quicken, to catalyze the whole system in an exponential intensity and rhythm. That's what I'm doing. What I'm doing, as you know, is extremely difficult to explain. I've tried all my life. My clan has tried. I'm even different from my clan of freak. I'm a freak within freaks. And it's basically impossible. I speak, I don't know, 12 languages. I've tried in every human languages, and I'm not counting the extinct languages, mm. to try to give metaphorical appreciation of what I'm doing. It doesn't work. Once again, it goes back to the experiment. I can prove what I'm doing. People don't have to understand it. They just have to experience it and do it themselves. They'll be glad with doing it and not explaining it. I know a lot of charlatans who can explain what they don't do. I cannot explain what I'm doing. Yeah. That makes me the opposite of a charlatan, I think. Yeah. But I can prove my point. Yeah. Um, then, because, you, because we're, it's very difficult to give a... You know, again, these mul as soon as you start slipping between the cracks of our reality and moving into multiple... The, yes. conti the continuum. As soon as you go into the continuum, all the metaphoric boundaries of our reality set... Hey, I'm sorry, yes. So, yes, so, <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. So I, I, d I deeply appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So tell me then, um, in, in very straight terms, um, the applicant, what, what you have done. I mean, what AIDS, I mean, what, what do you do? Anything. I mean, tell me, tell me, give me concrete examples then of, of what, some of the, what some of your skills have uh, okay. brought about. No, a few salient examples. One kin with cystic fibrosis in mom's belly. This is exactly what I can do. It's I, I took care of the father and the mother. They were bearing the same defective gene. gene. The mother was pregnant. The kid was diagnosed by the best experts because they were scientists themselves as having the cystic fibrosis. When I took care of the fetus and he was born, no cystic fibrosis, no signs. Then they went deep into the kid's DNA. It was gone, which means it's genetic engineering. Well, it's also playing God to a point, but why not if it's for the kid? I mean, what was wrong with interfering with... That was not God's will for the kid to be, to be sick. That was a little bit of chaos in life, which is necessary, actually, to test our free will, at least. Okay. So that's an example. People in a deep coma who wake up from a coma. Animals, of course, an expert. I can do basically anything on animals. I'm a thousand times more effective on an animal than I'm on a baby. A thousand times more effective on a baby than I'm on a teenager. And a, and a few dozen times more effective on a teenager than on an old person. It goes with the proximity to life, to God, life potential, and many, many things. But since most processes, m most diseases, relate to self-destruction, what it takes me is just to bypass you. 
to circumvent your will of self-destruction, mm. to reestablish the harmony, the normal functioning of the soul, mind, body interactions and nothing else and stop killing yourself. If we can come back to the burns now, for example, yes. that's an interesting subject. Yes, yes, yes. Because burns represent an anomaly. In terms of so-called diseases, well, unless I'm a complete charlatan, I cannot guarantee a 100% rate of success. When people really want to die, they die and there is nothing else. Just because of my ethics, I cannot force them to live. So I can have always 10%, 20%, 30%, who knows, of rate of unsuccess. There is always an explanation for it. The only anomaly of burns, it's I guarantee a 100% rate of success, period. If I fail once on burns, I'm out of the job. I take, take my word for it. Third degree burns. Not, I cannot take care of more like 10, 15 persons a day. Anything more, I would be a quack again. That was very bad when I was receiving 100,000 letters a day. That means we had to play God and say who is going to live, who is going to die. But that was not my barbecue and I'm glad of it. Okay, I had my Ticon team of people who were choosing according to their existential worth or youth, who was to live and who was to die. Burns, I could take care of 100,000 a day without bragging. 100,000 people burn simultaneously. Why? It's because it doesn't take me anything. It doesn't cost me an ounce of energy. Nothing. It's just like bypassing you completely and shifting reality once and for all. You know that there are people who died of cold in a locking room, frigorific system, who believed the system was on but wasn't, and they died at 72 Fahrenheit of cold, with frozen bites and everything. Mm -hmm. That's the power of the mind. Under hypnosis, you can also suggest to someone that is holding, instead of a pen, some kind of an electric resistance. That's very hot. And you're going to generate burns second degree on the fingers. That's the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. This goes back to a very ancient taboo. Berit Esh. Mm -hmm. This is the Kabbalistic code. That's the first word of the bone, not Berit Ish. Not at the beginning, but alliance with fire. Berit Esh in Hebrew. The alliance with fire, isn't it, the, in terms of paleontology, the moment in which human became human? But isn't it also the moment where they start to sin, to separate from other animals, to conquer new territories, to destroy, unnecessary, to cook? And I'm not so much for cooking food. As you know that, I try to respect and abide to natural laws, nothing else. When you're exposed to fire, it creates a horrible pain. Nothing, but very superficial. Even when you expose five minutes to flame, when you think about it, assuming you didn't inhale, of course, the heat and your brain wasn't damaged, it's just like five millimeters of your skin that has been barbecued. But all your organs are fine, everything is fine, mm -hmm. just the pain is unbearable. And then your brain gives a signal of self destruction. Mm -hmm. And then you start to generate edemas and everything. That was, that's your body, that's the immune internal physiological reaction that kills after burns. My work is very simple. I bypass those. And I do nothing else. It doesn't cost me a thing. I couldn't do, that's why I don't even have to charge. Okay, that's public. You can send me any fireman you want, any burn. I could also teach people in half an hour groups all over the planet, you know, some kind of emergency team in case there would be a nuclear blast, in case there would be something really bad happening. You know, I can teach firemen, but also volunteers, people how to heal burns, because they could do it on a wider scale. They can be everywhere in every city where it happens. Mm -hmm. And this is also the s most simple thing to be tested scientifically. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. give me cells, we burn them, and, and we see the difference between the one the batch have not been taken care of and the one I have. And people would do exactly the same. The trick is, there is no spoon, there is no fire, no, nothing is really real, but fire is an illusion. The Druids, the real ones, had a special concept for fire, and that was not part of the element, but it was an usurper of element. Mm -hmm. Looks very much like it's alive, air, you know, ground, and fire. No, fire is an illusion, like time, like many things, mm -hmm. but this one is so easy to unveil, to expose as an illusion experiment. So that's why I have such rate of results. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And I guarantee someone who has been burned third degree, barbecued, they're going to give him mega doses of morphine and let him die in an hospital. I guarantee that person can play tennis basically without clarification three weeks later. Mm 
if I can take, or any one of my sins will take care of the person. Well, you see, there was a, um, an element of time that was required for this because of this immune response. Could you explain that? Yes. That w when your mind has given to your body this horrible hoarder of self-destruction, when the destructions have occurred on a extent which is beyond the point of recovery, well, there is nothing you can do, which means optimally, I can guarantee the 100% rate of success and of without clarification within minutes of the exposure to fire. After an hour, I could, or they could, my students, have a slight rate of unsuccesses. After a day, this is too late. Okay, so rush when you burn yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Rush. It's just, you don't want this unreality to become real. Mm -hmm. When it has become too real, it's like the matrix all over, you know? Yeah. You are dead, even in your dream. Can you live without your mind? No. Your mind, even in an unreal fashion, has de has decided that that was the reality, and you have to die, you die. Even yeah. though it wasn't real. So, would you say then, let's, let's now take this, uh, this principle, you, with, with fire, we, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. That, you, that the immune system, the brain says, this is horrible, it's too painful, I'm dying. Yes. Oh, so well, it goes back to old taboo. It's also infringing an ancient taboo about fire. It goes back to, that's why it creates such a very rapid uh, detrimental response within the body. It's not only the pain. There are many philosophical, spiritual, and historical aspects, but it will take us for hours. So let's just keep it all together. Um, my question has to do now with the general, the general, th your general technology mm -hmm. of of actually what I'm going to say is a reality shift. Yes. What you're going, what you're doing is somehow dropping into, and I'm not uh, again. This is a pretty difficult area to go into, but you're basically going in and and replacing one reality by another. One reality for another. Because there are infinite levels of realities, once again. As well as there is not a universe, but pluriverses, yeah. infinitely. You know, in the 30s, we didn't even know the concept of a galaxy. We thought it was just a bright star. Then we realized, huh, there are billions of galaxies. Now we talk about one universe and one Big Bang, but Big Crush, Big Bang, that's just one cell of an infinite level of universes. And that's in one reality. Yeah. The infinite levels of reality with infinite levels of universes and so forth. My gift, but it's not my gift. You have the same, just don't know how to use it. It's just to serve between realities. That means I see a kid being run over by a truck with his little bicycle. I just break into the space time continuum right away, go to another reality, and the kid is going to go right through all those wheels without being hit. That's it. In other reality, he's dead. In one reality, you have a cancer, in another one, you, you don't. But I guess you, you cannot understand the way life really is. Do you think you are just one 50 years old man? Don't you understand all those transcarnational processes? Not reincarnational, transcarnational. Those simultaneous lives, this, those interconnection that makes you a drop of water in an ocean, a galaxy, a woman, a child, an animal, all that simultaneously. Space, time, once again, this great illusion. It's therefore so easy for me when I'm taking care of someone in really bad shape, really dying, first thing I blend. Well, it's easy, we're always one. But you just don't know the system. I do. We blend. Then we just detach from this little reality, this realm of limited possibilities, and go to another one where things are much easier to fix. You know, and then go back. It's just what I call surfing. Mm -hmm in this multiple reality universes, the reverses. There are other realities in which it's easy to heal oneself, mm. you know. But those processes of self-healing, I'm just basically taking over your centers of control when you have decided to destroy yourself. But through faith, miracles happen. Incredible miracles happen just because people have seen Jesus or Krishna, they are going to heal from terminal cancer. I'm no better. I'm just bypassing the system and inculcating into their deeper mind and free will center. Heal yourself instead of destroying yourself. You heal yourself. I don't heal. 
there are two healers. God, you, all of you. I'm just interested in. I'm just in between surfing. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cannot be more clear. You're doing great. You don't know. I'm, mm. I'm delighted. Okay. You do this is fabulous. This is great. I appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. And again, this all belongs to you, so I, I, it's none of this is mine. So no, no, it, it's to everyone. Um, I hope I can be of service. So let's. Um, I'm, I got work up. I woke up this morning. Mm -hmm. we'll, I'll, we'll just play a little bit. Um, and I was thinking about the role of image, the c imagination. Image. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the surfing. Mm -hmm. Because in order to in order to to do what you just described, it, three things seem to be going on. And mm -hmm. again, I'm in the embarrassed to be so presumptuous. Please, please don't. You have number one. Um, you have to move into other reality, other dimensions. I'm going to say dimensions. But to me, reality is an image. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, it is. And, and so that's that's imagination. So there's something there's something linked with the, with a, with a fundamental image image making process that's that's part of this design that your technology is the capacity to hold the, uh, uh, to 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 imagine something. Well, if you can imagine, that's the old Druidic proverb. If you can dream it, you can do it. The proof of justice, of a higher dimension in which justice reigns, is that everyone has ingrained a sense of that's not fair. Mm. Everyone, in every race, every culture, every civilization, even animals, no doubt, share a sense of that's not fair. A sense of there must be something different, better, higher. Well, if you can dream it, it exists. That's you just have lost that sense. You are completely tied up, you know, with your heavy chains and your iron balls to one little reductionistic reality. But if you can dream it, it exists. Yeah. And what you can dream and what you remember is nothing compared to what your unconscious dreams and can also yeah. do and so forth. And this is with 10% of your brain, remember? Yeah. Okay. So come to my machine, get awakened, <laughs> and get transformed. <laughs> so, so now, so we have the, ima the capacity to imagine. Is, is, uh, imagine, is, imago, remember? That's yes, the same yes, concept. Yes, fine, Perfection, yeah. imagine, imago. Yeah, yeah, I saw that loop. So this capacity to imagine, there's, we can know that's another whole discussion of how that's been retarded and what's going on. To even the capacity to dream and imagine is... It's lost. Uh, it's gone. It's gone. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. Big, de a huge thing. Um, number two is the t is the capacity to then move into another dimension. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's another whole that's another whole thing. Or, or is it? Can you help me understand the moving into a different dimension? Because I I see them as different. I see the capacity to imagine one thing. And, and moving into another dimension, another. No, you're a prisoner. It's your fear who keeps you from doing it. Any shaman would tell you exactly the same thing. Mm. It's just your fear that keeps you from flying, mm. that keeps you from going to another universe, that keeps you from making a miracle, that keeps you from being young forever or powerful. Or this is fear, once again, the greatest iron ball on this planet. Mm -hmm. Fear. But don't under, uh, underestimate this holocaust, this cultural holocaust that keep you from being all you can be, that took away so many senses, so many powers, so many capacity, and sen this sensor reality that you had, telepathic senses, telekinetic senses, and so much more that I cannot even explain. Mm -hmm. So you're afraid of the unknown. You don't know what you're going to find, but you know what you're going to live. No matter how shitty your life is, after all, it's better to have a shitty life than no life at all. Or something more scary, what am I going to find the other side? Yeah. And if I don't come back, yeah. am I going to get lost? Am I going to become a ghost? Some kind of a spirit, you know? Fear, fear, fear. That's only fear. Even though you feel right now fearless. I love you very much. I think you are one of the best beings I've ever seen. But still, you, Michael, you have a lot of fear. Y there, there is also a fear, that's the fear of hurting people. Fear of infringing with other people. Fear of kicking their ass, be it God's will for you to kick their ass. What do you think a sickness is? It's God kicking the ass. 
okay, for people to wake up. It's a good thing. Actually, there is nothing bad really happening. You know, always good things because we don't listen. God is trying to tell us something in a nice way. No, we want it our way, or it's not the right time. Come back later. Or so he's going to talk louder and louder and louder, and at the end, it's metastatic. <laughs> And that's too bad. And we don't, still don't wake up. We don't get it. Fear, once again, that keeps you from turning what you call imagination and dreams into realities, other realities. Mm -hmm. But that can be healed. Yes, that can be removed. We're working on, we're working on it. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, third, third issue. Yes. Question. Um, the target. Right? The, the, so we, I mean, in, my, in my musing this morning, mm -hmm. I, had, I had three coordinates. I had an imagination or reality, I had mm -hmm. dimensions, and then I had the target. We have the target being the other person that you're going to be working on, or the object of this thing. Yes. So I think I'm going now where we, we have this uh, non-linear, um, non all one, you know, we're all one, there isn't a particular entity, that's an abstraction, and yet you have the ability to, to target any place in the world somebody that's in space and in time and, and in their own you can find me any place so that's what I, I was curious that's the selves do exist selves do exist sub selves even do exist that means you don't realize that in every of your cell billions of atoms in every atom billions of universes mm -hmm. you know there is no right here right now but <coughs> yet I know, that's one of the paradox, or uh, an apparent paradox. There is a way to find you in what's not a huge chaos, which is actually a huge infinity or infinities. There is a self that I cannot understand, that you cannot understand, but God can, that make you very important, and right here and right now. And that's the way your little self right here, right now, can impact all yourself in all those parallel lives right here, right now, you can change what you are doing in the 12th century or what you are doing a million years from now. You can change it right here, right now. That shouldn't be called a self. Mm -hmm. It's a little identity. We all have a little identity, sometimes extremely important, within the greater oneness of all things. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this is, I cannot give you anything no. more. It's, first it's a secret. Well, that's okay. No, that goes back to the ultimate secret of life. Who are we? What are we doing? Okay, why are we here? Well, there is a purpose and there is a reason. Yeah. And remember that in my philosophy of life, the only sins that are absolutely unforgivable are the sins of omission, not commission. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do bad can be redeemed, almost everything you do. But what you were supposed to do, you haven't done. That's bad. And that relates to this idea of little self our duty right here, right now, to change things and our own potential that's wasted. The waste of talents yeah. goes back with the sins of omission I'm talking about. Yeah. Very nice. Mm. I'm stalling because I'm not quite sure where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the idea of modeling, that we need models in order to open capacity. Yes. Um, let's relate that back to adults. Most adults um, are, don't, can't model because they weren't modeled. Right? We've got this breakdown of modeling. It's never too late. No, I That's the positive no, no, no. thing I, I know that. from life. So my, my, my my um, my passion and my focus is how to how can we awaken these kinds of perceptions or these capacities in adults so that children can grow up without being damaged and without without being um, like you said the failure to act. Well, we're that living. That goes back to modeling. Yeah, but we're living in an upside down world. Well, actually, the children should be our own teachers. They know more than we do at every level. And I wonder whether, rather than teach the parents, we shouldn't teach the kids. We'll teach their parents in return, and the parents will teach their grandparents. Mm -hmm. 
because they are more malleable, more flexible, more plastic, more open to changes and they have a greater potential. But once again, it goes back to experiment, you know, whether you are eight years old or whether you are seven years old, you just need a complete transformation. You just need to break free from your own cultural prison. Well, I can do that upon people, but better, I can teach people to do that upon others. That's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. To give them a completely different appreciation of themselves, of their own surrounding, of the reality, of the universe, to give them a sense of duty and of happiness, of joy, of love, of self-love at least. I think that's what's missing the most. Mm -hmm. It's not unconscious love. Well, that is great and beautiful, but it's too theoretical. People should just love themselves at first. We go from the basics. Love thyself, you know. Feel in love with yourself. That's what exactly I'm... That's the only order I'll give every client, every patient, every student of mine. And then, through their own self-love, well, they just grow with this power for others to say, but I want it also, you know, I want to be in love with myself. There is nothing wrong with this positive selfishness to a point, as long as we can relinquish it later on down the road. People need, we need atanors, which is the alchemical cauldron of transmutation. That's what they need, atanors. We need to have those atanors everywhere, in which there is something I like with the American psyche, many things I like, many things I don't like also. But the right here, right now, I'm not opposed to it. That's what people want. They want it right here, right now, not in 10 years, not in 10 centuries. We can do it very fast, you know, with my technology added to my own power, I tell you, we can turn people not only in a different being, but two in different species in less than an hour. We can do that millions of times a day. It's just a matter of having, like the financial, we have the technological means to do so, we just have don't, we don't have yet the financial means to do so. So people just need to transform themselves very, very fast, being different beings. Wait a second. Mm -hmm. Let me be sure I've got you here. Go ahead. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I'm sorry. I cannot answer more precisely to the idea of people should be transformed dramatically. Having learned how to love themselves. When they know how to learn them, they cannot love others unlike they love, unless they love themselves. That's the first basic, once again. But it's very easy. I mean, because it's the right thing. And that's exactly what Gandhi was saying. When you are doing the right thing, it's amazing how you can succeed. Yeah. <laughs> and how you are drawing people, because instinctively people know that's the right thing to do. They know it's the wrong thing, they know that's the right thing, and they want the right thing. Let me ask you a couple of uh, strategic questions then. Okay. okay. I'm going to say organizational questions, or, you know, Europe, this is, a, this is the here and now for you too. Yes, it is. And um, so... You've had this vision for many years. You've had the skills and you've been practicing and working and blah, blah, blah for many years. Um, mm. What has prevented you from making more progress than you have? Maybe you weren't ready. Maybe I wasn't ready. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe God wasn't ready. Maybe that wasn't the timing. Yeah. And it's just happening to be the good time yeah. now to do it. For the first time in my life, I'm ready to delegate completely, to open up yeah. at whatever cost. Um... Let's go there because let's let's say because this is actually a wonderful point. Yes. This notion that, that now is the time. This is therefore the we don't have to carry anger. Mm -hmm. We don't have to carry guilt yeah. or bitterness. Yeah. It couldn't have happened ten years ago. It couldn't have happened a hundred years ago. It had, no matter how sad it is, to be that cataclysmic, that disastrous the situation, to the point where everybody's walking with a finger crossed now. Even governments they know that time is running out. And it's exactly when things look completely disparate and hopeless that actually there is a window of hope opening. That's the positive part. That's the hope. I wasn't ready. You weren't ready. We all are ready now. And we have to do it. Why? Because it's possible. Before it wasn't. So I'll delegate. People will delegate themselves and so forth. And we can change things and keep horrible things happen. They will happen either horribly or beautifully. Let's make them happen beautifully, peacefully and painlessly. It's like a birth. It can be convulsive. It can be otherwise. It can be also beautiful. And the real name, 
the real concept. My family, my clan, they call themselves the midwives of God. And that's exactly how it fits today. We need midwives. We need to cheat midwives for a new birth.